Hello everyone, Mike here. Understandably, I haven't been to the movies very often lately. In fact, the first movie I saw in a movie theater since Onward was Black Widow. One of the movies that I really wanted to see in 2021, other than those in the MCU, was a film called Reminiscence. It's also available for HBO Max, so this was my first time using it as a streaming service, and I'll say it was well worth it. Reminiscence is a film directed by Lisa Joy, which marks her debut as a director. Prior to this, she has worked as a writer and producer for Burn Notice and Westworld. She will also be working on an upcoming TV adaptation of the Fallout video game series, which I didn't know about until recently. After seeing the way that she unprofessionally described its premise and style of humor, I really don't have high hopes for it, but that's a video for another day. Reminiscence stars Hugh Jackman as Nick Bannister, a private investigator in a dystopian version of Miami that has been devastated due to wars and extreme flooding. Yeesh, talk about bad timing. With sea levels rising, people have little to look forward to and find more comfort in reliving their past. Nick and his partner Watts, played by Thandaway Newton, run a service that allows clients to fully relive their most cherished memories and experience them in vivid detail. How this works is that they are semi-submerged in a tank of water and their memories are digitally portrayed in a way that fully constructs a scene almost like a stage play, for lack of a better term. As Nick and Watts close up shop, a walk-in client asks for help in finding her missing keys by using the machine. After taking her in, Nick later meets the woman named May at the lounge that she sings at the following night and the two instantly hit it off. When May goes missing, Nick becomes obsessed with finding her and accesses the memories of others in order to find her but soon discovers that she is connected to an elaborate criminal conspiracy. I have to say that this is an awesome setup and it deals with some interesting themes such as nostalgia and how we are more connected to our experiences in the past rather than our optimism for the uncertain future. The film does have its moments where it does explore those themes but it constantly juggles them with the clumsy world building. The near future setting is interesting as buildings are only half submerged in water, but it leaves a lot of unanswered questions about how electricity works, or how much of the world is affected. We briefly see New Orleans, which is almost normal looking, but the characters always mention ongoing wars that aren't fully explained. Nick and Watts were apparently veterans, and this does come into play more for the latter, but it feels inconsequential in the grand scheme of things. Divorcing that from the other elements, I have to say that one of this film's strengths is its story, which is very enjoyable and often left me guessing. It's one of those things where the main character is very perceptive to subtle things, and while I hardly remembered the clues before they were relevant, it's just enough to give slight aha moments without becoming excessively convoluted. With this much attention to detail in the story, it makes me wish that some of the other elements in the film had just as much of an impact. I will say that the overall cinematography is great and features a lot of good panning shots and angles where you can appreciate the atmosphere and visuals. While people were torn on the choice of casting, I think it works fairly well. Hugh Jackman isn't too bad in terms of his delivery, but he does have a great voice for the role, and Rebecca Ferguson as May is a very eclectic character, and I thought it was an interesting take to show multiple sides of her from the perspectives of other characters. I know this film got negatively received by critics through unfavorable comparisons. You know, I mean, I agree with some of those points, but for me personally, I actually found myself really getting invested. With all of that said, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie, mostly for its premise and neo-noir elements, so I would definitely give it a recommendation. It's worth watching once or maybe even twice, so I would give it a thumbs up. Also. The film has some interesting means of marketing and additional content, such as a very well put together music video and even a working phone number that you can call and text. You will receive multiple automated texts from Bannister and Associates, which will feature links for images, voice messages, and trailers. Calling the number itself will only result in a voicemail, and just in case you're watching this video in the future, I will play it for you for the sake of archiving. We're not available right no, now. No, no, not like that. When you gotta see the company name first, how the hell are you gonna know? They called us, Watts. They know who we are. Nick, just do it right or don't do it at all. All right. <clears throat> you reach Nick Bannister from Bannister & Associates, a reminiscent service where your memories are brought back to life. Unfortunately, we're not available right now and appointments are on a first-come basis. Text us your name and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you. Have you seen it yet? And what films are you looking forward to once we can safely return to theaters? Comment down below and let me know. And as always, subscribe to me if you want to see more. Take care.